Hello and welcome to part 4 of our series on creating a C-sharp app to extract data from Jira. Uh, now we've already coded up our first function which is logging into Jira and we didn't get any errors but then we didn't get really any error, um, any, any output either. I need output, I need it for both success and failure. For success that will help me uh, developing the function as I go along, just uh, like debug output so I can see what, what the output of the last function was as I'm taking it into the next function, things like that. And that debug output stuff, we'll strip that out once we're done with development. And then uh, there's the other side of it, failure. So if there's a failure, I want to get a useful error message out of it. Let's start with how we handle failures, because I'm a bit of a pessimist case. Um, for this, I really want something very simple, because this is sort of a prototype -y, uh, proof of concept type uh, work that I'm doing here. The simplest thing that will do the job good enough for now, and we can always upgrade it later. Honestly, you probably use your own more advanced framework for, for error handling anyway. The simplest thing that I can think of is that I'll just have each function output its own error message. Um, each function takes care of itself. And then there's one hiccup though. I do want to prevent any further execution uh, because each function kind of is dependent on the inputs gathered by previous functions. Um, they'll all just error out after any failure occurs and, and that'll just clutter up the display and force me to scroll up and up and up until I get to the root cause and, and that sounds messy and not fun. So um, so two things, right? Each function outputs its own error message and, and it prevents further execution after the error occurs. Um, and then we have our login function we can start doing this in. For this, let's see, um, we have a try block, we have a catch clause, a try catch block with a catch clause, something like that. Anyway, down here it looks like a good place to write line to write out my error message. So if I do get an error, I will say error in this is the login to Jira method. I could use reflection or something for this, but um, honestly, it's just five functions. I'll just type it out and then we will print the error. That's the first function telling us what went wrong all by itself. Um, now to stop further execution, what I'm thinking of doing here is another very basic thing. I will put a, I will make a flag for us, and it'll be a bool called uh, "Hey, errors occurred." And while we're setting things up, I'm going to say this dot errors occurred equals false. So no errors have occurred yet as soon as the, uh, the, the program starts. And from that point, then I will only execute each of these functions if not errors occurred. So this only executes if we have no errors. Of course, this first one isn't really necessary because we've just set it to false. We just told it that. but once we start moving along here, it will matter. Okay. How do we how do we set that? Is a uh, errors occurred flag? Let's see. Down here, if an error has occurred, then we simply set this dot errors occurred equals true. And that is about as easy as it could get. So that's the failure case. Then there's the success case. So if everything's come through here fine, then how about let's move this to the end. We'll actually set our value at the end of our function after we've done all that other stuff that we meant to do. But before we do send that response out, let's Let's print it out to the console so we get our debug output. What is it? What was our response from the server? Response from server. And you know what? I'm going to put a new line in there just to separate things out a bit. And then we'll just print out response from the server. And I'll throw the this that is our success output. So um, obviously you'd probably be using a, a proper logging framework, not console write line, but that's good enough for now. So if I save this, and does it compile? Response from server. Ooh. Oh, that's because I call it login response. Login response. And we can't do 
it before we set it, can we? Okay, console right line. So we will we will set it and then we can look at it. There we go before the try block finishes. And that should do the job. Okay. Um there we go. Air Sons. Response. Sorry for the typos. Aha, uh -huh, just warnings. Let's see. Oh, unable to connect to remote server. You know what? I need to stop for a second and go start up my, my Jira server. I haven't stopped that, so I will pause the video and come right back. Okay, so we have our Jira server running now and uh, we can run right back in here and I just tried it once to make sure it was actually running again so uh, we've made no changes here we've just uh, come back we can compile our program which is nice and when we execute it there we go we get our login response A session name j session ID value there it is that's the bit we need so um, and then login info that's login time things like that um, so that is exactly what I was looking for, and I'm very happy to see that. Uh, uh, and really, that's it for this episode. We set us, ourselves up with some good enough for now error handling and debug output. Now we can see our responses, and we'll we'll use this in the next episode where we're figuring out how to parse it. And and, and luckily, it shows what we expected. In the next episode, we'll actually parse out the J session ID from this response. We'll save it to use later uh, when we send in our request to actually pull data down, issue data. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.